Hey everyone, welcome back to the Alberta Roundup. I'm your host, Rachel Emanuel. I hope that you guys are getting into that festive Christmas spirit. It is one of my favorite times of the year. I've got my festive green sweater on. I've been listening to a lot of Christmas music and I won't even tell you how long my Christmas tree has been up for. If you guys have a favorite holiday song, please let me know what it is in the comment section below. I'm getting a little tired of my playlist and I need to freshen it up with some new music. Now let's take a look at what we're gonna be talking about on today's show. Alberta Premier Danielle Smith has called Federal Environment Minister Stephen Gibo dangerous to Federation. She also piled on with him with her Environment Minister, Rebecca Schultz, when they called on Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to immediately replace Gibo. We're also gonna be taking a look at the Alberta government's move to raise the damage threshold beyond which motorists involved in a collision must report to a police. And finally, faculty at the University of Alberta removed Christmas trees on campus after a student asked if she could display a menorah. All that and more happening now on the Alberta Roundup. Okay guys, taking a look at our first topic here, Alberta Premier Danielle Smith said the door is shut to Cooperative Federation with Federal Environment Minister Stephen Guibault, whom she also called awful. Smith made the comments in response to a question on the Your Province, Your Premier radio show. She went on to say that Guibault is dangerous to the Federation because he acts outside the law. Take a listen to the exchange for yourself. With the unconstitutional laws and announcements without conversation or consultation, what can or is Alberta doing to try to have a cooperative relationship with the federal government, or is that door shut? Well, I can tell you, for me, it's shut with Stephen Gibbeau, the environment minister. He's awful. He violates the law. He doesn't follow the um, the Supreme Court judgments, and he acts in a, as I've called it, an imperious way. So I, I have very little interest in continuing any discussion with him. I can tell you I have a very good relationship with other ministers. I've given credit to Christian Freeland, who did a great job of matching us and giving a, a generous carbon tax credit for carbon capture utilization and storage. So I've got a good relationship with some ministers, but I'm not going to pretend to you that uh, Stephen Gibault is, is at all somebody we can work with. I think he's very dangerous, quite frankly. He's dangerous to the Federation. And he's he's dangerous because he doesn't but he doesn't honor the Constitution and he acts outside the law. And so we're going to make sure that we push back to the greatest extent, extent possible on anything he puts forward. Now, if you think the premier wasn't already harsh enough on Gibo, if that's even possible, she later piled on him even further with her environment minister, Rebecca Schultz. The pair called on Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to immediately replace Gibo, and they even called his actions at COP28 a national embarrassment. Smith and Schultz released a joint statement after COP28 in response to the federal government's actions on climate policy. They wrote, quote, We were gravely disappointed to see Federal Minister of Environment and Climate Change Stephen Guibault and other radical activists continue to push an approach that would consign the world to energy poverty and economic stagnation by focusing only on ending all fossil fuel use. It was a national embarrassment to witness Minister Guibo at an international conference actively sabotaging the interests of Albertans and other Canadians by releasing a series of incoherent and illegal policy pronouncements that he and his government have absolutely no legal authority to impose upon the provinces of Canada. Now, the final wording ultimately did not recommend a full-on phase-out, but nonetheless, Smith and Schultz said they will not forget Gibo's full-on crusade against their energy sector. Moving into our next story here, the Alberta government has raised the threshold upon which motorists must report a collision to the police from $2,000 to $5,000. Transportation Minister Devin Drieschen said the move will free up police resources and better reflect the rising cost of auto repairs. He said, quote, we look at just the cost of vehicle repairs and a minor fender bender of just bumping into someone's bumper or taking out a light. It's very easy to surpass that threshold. We didn't want to make just pretty much every fender bender have to be reported to the police. And that's why we increased this limit. That increase will take effect on January 1st. And said he doesn't expect that the changing threshold will impact insurance rates, adding, quote, we're looking at lots of options to be able to roll out here, hopefully in the new year, to help address high insurance rates. This next news story should offer some relief to those of us living in Calgary. 
The provincial government is giving Calgary funding for 50 new permanent cop positions, according to Public Safety Minister Mike Ellis, a former city cop himself. In a video posted to X, formerly known as Twitter, Ellis related some of the shocking crimes ongoing in Alberta cities and blamed the federal government's bail system. These stories are heartbreaking when we consider the suffering of the victims and their families, and they are equally frustrating when we hear about the alleged perpetrators. Random shootings, random murders, from alleged offenders who are apparently out on bail or release. Everyone knows that our bail system is broken when repeat offenders can repeat crimes so easily. This bail system was brought in by the Trudeau government and it has been devastating for every province, not just Alberta. Those crimes included a carjacking at gunpoint, which was allegedly done by an individual out on bail, as well as the killing of a father of seven, also allegedly committed by an individual out at bail. And he also spoke about the many stabbings at Calgary C train stations. Ellis said these are just some of the violent attacks ongoing in Calgary that are making people feel unsafe. While announcing the new funding, Ellis said random, unprovoked attacks on city streets used to be rare occurrences but now they're happening almost daily. He added, quote, this will not be tolerated. Moving into the controversy of the week, a law student at the University of Alberta asked to display a menorah on campus and her request resulted in Christmas trees on campus being removed. Rachel Cook, a Jewish student on campus, asked to display an electric menorah after noticing many of the other Christmas decorations on campus, including, of course, Christmas trees, as well as garland and polar bears. Her request was initially met with excitement, but later the vice dean emailed her to express concerns. He said that existing decorations on campus were meant to be non-denominational. He instead offered her a bookable room where she could light and display the menorah. And shortly after, Christmas trees were taken down on campus, while other decorations like polar bears and the garland were kept up. Cook said she never took issue with the Christmas trees and was shocked to learn of such an overreaction. She said, quote, I got an email from the vice dean telling me no trees either. We're going to take all those down because of your concerns. That's when I responded, but I don't have concerns. I actually find them quite pretty. I just wanted to display a menorah. Cook said she believes faculty decided to take down the trees because they didn't want her putting up a menorah over their incorrect belief that it would be a display in support of Israel. Michael Brown, a spokesperson at the University of Alberta, said some decorations were removed in order to maintain the intent of seasonal decorations, which is to be secularly festive. Moving into what we're watching in the weeks to come, Alberta has seen a sharp increase in opioid-related deaths this is a very difficult news story, especially headed into the holidays, but that is an increase of over 25% of opioid related deaths when compared to the same period last year. In September alone, Edmonton reported 62 drug poisoning deaths, 60 of which involved opioids. And as of September, Edmonton experienced an increase in opioid related fatalities compared to the previous year with 492 opioid poisonings reported in the first nine months. That is far surpassing the 428 deaths recorded during the same period in 2022. Provincially, the situation is equally as grim. A total of 1,411 Albertans succumbed to opioid poisoning so far, which is a steep rise from the 1,124 who died from opioid-related deaths last year. A spokesperson for Mental Health and Addictions Minister Dan Williams said these numbers are why Alberta is so focused on a recovery-orientated system of care. The spokesperson said, quote, every life lost from the deadly disease of addiction is a tragedy and it reinforces our focus on making recovery possible for every Albertan. For those of you who want to dig into this issue a little further, I would encourage you to watch Canada is Dying and Vancouver is Dying. Those are two excellent documentaries made by friend of the show, Aaron Gunn, and they really shed a light on how federal government policies are creating this national drug crisis. Finally, moving into our weekly comment roundup, our first comment here is from Jim Campbell. He says, no one in Alberta voted for Gibo, and no one should concede anything to a creep like that. Hey, he said it, not me. He added, the days of Albertans paying for liberal votes in Quebec while Ottawa tries to crush their incomes are done. Our next comment here is from Maria Zacharias. She writes, this is a hard job for Premier Danielle in this time. I pray she will be able to stay strong and not waver under the dictatorship of the Liberals and Trudeau. 
Alberta is the only province doing well, and we will stand behind Danielle to keep our province strong. Marie, I really appreciated that call just to remind people to pray for the premier, pray that she has the strength to withstand the pressure that she is facing. We should actually pray for all our political leaders, even, and I know I'm going to get a little hate for this, Justin Trudeau, we should pray that he finally recognizes that he is unfit for office and that he resigns. And our comment of the week goes to user Izzard P. He writes, good news. Canada has so many trees that we are already carbon negative. Great job, everyone. Planet saved. Well, there's no arguing with that. And with that, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please don't forget to let me know what your favorite Christmas song is in the comment section. I will see you guys next week. Have a great weekend and God bless. Thank you.